Hey folks, it is March 19, Friday, and this is once again The Daily Word. Welcome to the weekend, almost. You know, after the disciples had spent a lot of time with Jesus, I think it had begun to dawn on them that they needed more of something they didn't have enough of. And so they had a request. Luke 17, starting at verse 5. The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. And the Lord said, If you had faith like a, like a mustard seed, you would say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. And again, Matthew 17, 17, in the verses after, Jesus answered and said, You unbelieving and perverted generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you? He said this because they had been unable to cast a demon out of a boy. Uh, they'd, they'd just been stymied. And so verse 18, And Jesus rebuked him, and the demon came out of him, and the boy was cured at once. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not drive it out? And he said to them, Because of the littleness of your faith. For truly I say to you, if, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you'll say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible to you. Well, when Jesus told them how to increase their faith, to make it bigger and more powerful, he didn't give them a method to pursue, he didn't give them a book to read, he didn't tell them to confess this or confess that, he didn't tell them to, he didn't tell them to speak anything into reality. He didn't actually say anything about the power of words. What he did was give them a bigger vision, as if getting a bigger vision, a greater goal, is the way to grow greater faith. It was like he was saying, don't build your trust on past failures like not being able to cast a demon out of a kid. Don't look at the negatives. Never look at what didn't work. Never look at what didn't work. Don't measure by circumstances or obstacles as over against what you think of yourself and your potential. Get a bigger vision. Do you want to overcome your lack of trust? Get a vision for something greater to accomplish. Think of something impossible for you to do, and then, empowered by the Holy Spirit, go do it. So Jesus was saying, get a vision built on what God has called you and us to do and be. And then wrap your life around it, whether or not you feel some mysterious sense of emotional certainty. Emotional certainty isn't what it's about. So here's a personal testimony. There was only one time, there's been only one time in our more than 48 years of marriage that my wife and I got behind on our bills. It was my last semester of full-time study at Fuller Seminary, probably 19, what, 1976, I was serving part-time as a youth pastor in a mainline denominational church that had been solidly Bible-believing. It was the only reliable income we had, and we had two babies to support. And then the denomination sent in a, a senior pastor who didn't hold to biblical truth, and we found ourselves in conflict. I chose to resign rather than feed the problem. It put my family at risk, but I really had no choice. The good Bible-believing pastor that I'd served under had suffered a breakdown and had been forced to leave. The bishop sent in a replacement who was a liberal, who didn't really believe the Bible and was offended by all the manifestations of the Spirit that our kids were experiencing. It was time to go. It left Beth and me and the babies with no dependable income. We fell behind in our rent by about a month, and it shook us really hard. We cried out to God that we'd been faithful. We'd always tithed, we'd always given, and so where was the promise of provision? I fell into depression. I was scared. We didn't understand, and I began to be hurt and wounded, questioning even my faith. And then I heard the Lord say, You've only asked me to sustain you. I want you to honor my greatness by asking me to make you rich. <laughs> I saw that we'd become so used to just getting by, to having just enough, to living on the edge, and we'd come to accept it. It was all we expected from our great and generous God. It was like the Lord was saying, get a bigger vision and base it on my greatness. So just to honor him, I prayed that God would make us rich. 
It didn't matter that it didn't change anything in the way I felt emotionally. It only mattered that I obeyed. In the next day, in our mailbox, wrapped in white paper, I found a stack of bills in ones and twenties. It was enough money to pay the back rent, the rent for the current month, and the Lord's tithe, his 10%. I never knew who put it there. God never did make us rich, but that's not the point. Never in nearly half a century now has God ever let us down, not once. And we live pretty well. Today, I understand what that prayer was about. Maybe we ought to call it the principle of the outrageous prayer. It was about trust in the greatness and love of Father God. I needed to learn to honor the magnitude of his love by asking outrageously on the basis of his greatness. I know that I'm called to a level of trust in Father God that looks like the trust Jesus had for his Father. It results in authority to speak the word of command in his name and see creation obey in amazing ways. Get the bigger vision. You see it in Peter when he met the lame beggar at the gate of the temple shortly after the Spirit filled them with power on the day of Pentecost. He didn't ask God to heal the beggar. He took authority and commanded the beggar to rise and walk, Acts 3, 6. But Peter said, do not, I do not possess silver and gold, but what I have, what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, walk. And seizing him by the right hand, he raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were strengthened. With a leap, he stood upright and began to walk. And he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. Well, that took a level of childlike trust and outrageous boldness that most of us have yet to come to rest in. But I believe the Lord has given us a starting place, so listen very carefully. Through years of struggle, many of us have settled for the status quo in the same way that Beth and I had settled into a pattern of poverty and accepted it as normal back in our seminary days. This does no honor to our God. I believe the remedy, the faith builder, is to begin to pray outrageous prayers for things as huge as telling a tree to move itself. Get a bigger vision. Like Beth and me, asking the Lord to make us rich. Bigger vision. It means that a whole lot of us need to refuse to accept the loss of dreams, the death of dreams, of things God called us to be and do long ago, and it means we need to begin to pray outrageously into those dreams and into greater dreams. And it's best if those bold and big prayers are for us to be able to receive the greatest outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the history of the world and for our churches to rise to the vision of oneness, holiness, and power that Jesus saw, longed for, and prayed for. Praying for God to pour miracle power through you and your church to touch a lost world. Increase our faith, the disciples said. I'm talking about getting a bigger vision for your life and your personal ministry. We've all been called to one. I'm talking about getting a bigger vision for what you can do in Jesus for the kingdom of God. I'm talking about acting on it. And look for the day when we see the promise Jesus made in John 14, 12 realized. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to the Father. Well, turn away from the political situation and the broken prophecies and seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness with an expanded vision for the impact of the kingdom of God. Pray huge, outrageous prayers of faith and move on them as the Lord guides you. And then watch what happens. God is about to do something amazing through his church. But we need to focus. We need to pray for things that are bigger than we think we can handle, bigger than we have settled for. Amen, and I pray everybody has a great weekend.